just me and my guitar YouTubers, today on the shrimp cupboard I'm going to uh, be installing a new one of these well in fact not installing it because I've already done it but that's the old one a little bit beaten up now very rusty on the top membranes gone and I thought what's the point in just keep redoing this old one let's tidy up the shed a bit and um, so I bought a new one which is over here I fitted it up here. Bear with me, I'll just set you up. There it is. All shiny and new. It's got the gauge on. That was actually off the old one. Which is reading around 52. 52 bar, I think that is. So that's a good working pressure. TDS meter up there. Which is plumbed in through here and here. And on this one as well there that's the water coming in and that is the water going out that's the wastewater that is which goes straight down into the sewer straight through the bottom of my shed into the sewer in this one here we got a sediment filter which takes out all the heavy part you know particulates and bits of sand and grit or anything that comes in and then in the second one there's a foam cartridge filter in there which sediments out other things as well takes other stuff out of the water and we've got the carbon one then which takes out all the uh, chlorines, chloramines, and all that carry on. And then it goes up through there then, through the, um, through the membrane at the top, which is squeezed through hundreds and thousands of little pores in there, which takes out everything in there. And then it goes up through this, which is deionization um, resin in there, which actually takes everything else out, but it takes your TDS right down to zero. So it takes literally all the minerals everything out so it's completely clear of water nothing else in it whatsoever <clears throat> sorry right today i've got to um plumb this one into my uh, into the shrimp cover now so i've got this new piece of hose <clears throat> which i've got to um that's where it goes through had an old socket on there which ran for some power in, inside the actual shrimp cover but um but i took that out and I've just poked this through the uh, through the hole, put that tap on the end. So now from there, we've got to grab this. These are just push fittings, these are. Just grab the piece like that. You'll feel it lock in, and then that's it, then that's secured. You can get some little blue clips which fit on here, which will stop that accidentally getting pushed in and flying out. But uh, I don't really worry about that too much. And then from there, we're going to have to go, bear with me, <clears throat> going to go up through all this, there's some other spare pipes I've got here as well, which came with the machine, but a lot of them I've got um, already plumbed in, so I'm just using the existing pipes and, um, All right, and if that'll stay there a minute, I'm just gonna have to hold you close to the wall a minute, just while I use my other hand. And we go up round there. There you go, now you can follow me. You can go up round there now. It's just a matter of just going all the way around, really, and just bringing the pipe work up. Oop. The joys of working solo. Right, now here's the other end. Right, I'll have to sit you up again now. <clears throat> right okay that goes all the way around to there now and on this end we've got that which comes from the, the di resin chamber there that goes into a big coil which is just below the uh, below the picture and that one then is going to insert into there with a push there it goes that's seated in there nice make sure the other one's in there okay and now we can turn that on, hook that up there, knock that off there. <laughs> and bring that around there. It's all right, you'll be with me again in a minute. Stay with me, don't get bored. Right, so that's gone all the way around there now. 
that's a complete coily mess but we can tidy that up later it goes up there past all my levels and other rubbish of windows that my son built me at his college all the way across there into that socket there into that little valve there's the big coil there which i told you about because i used to fill my marine tank up with this system as well so i had to run through the house and then we go and it goes up into the machine <coughs> pardon me right that bit's all done right now we can go into the shrimp cupboard now and i'll show you the other end in there okay we're back in the shrimp cupboard right that's where that pipe came through from the shed if you can see under there that goes up the way here up into the ball cock there which is slowly very slowly dripping water back into the system i've already drained out a good 30 percent there i'd say and that should be filling up nicely now over time there's nothing in there as yet this tank here, I've actually got a couple of crystal reds in now. Sorry for the glare, but they're hiding at the moment. Oh no, I think there's one under there. Look, there you can see them. Lovely little shrimp he is. There's about three in there, but they're under the leaves. I think one's, one's malted. There's his little malt down there. I'll hook that out in a bit. Down below here, I've got some super reds, which are absolutely stunning little guys. There's about 10 in there at the moment. All these tanks are nicely cycled now, plenty of biofilm all over the sides, just chewing away on it nicely. I'll just take that one out of the way a minute. And the bottom tank here, which is also all cycled now. I'll take you out the tripod in a minute so I can show you a little bit closer to the screen, uh, to the tank, sorry. There you go. Plenty of biofilm on the back of the tank there now. I've got some other shrimps coming tomorrow or the next day. Oh no, sorry, they're not going to be here till next weekend. I keep forgetting we're Friday now, so... Yeah, but this tank's already nicely cycled. Let's give you a close-up of these reds. Absolutely beautiful, these are. Let me look at the colour on that. All busy, chewing away. There's some up on the filter as well, or one up on the filter. The rest of them are behind. One of the oxygenator there. They love going inside this uh, choil wood. In fact, you can see if you look around that piece of the choil there, you can you can see how much the, the how many droppings were around there where they scraped everything off and they literally polished that in no time at all. But I've just put some feed in here earlier, and as you can see, they're all going they're all going bananas for that. scrap there that's my bit of food get off yes very good so we're gonna slowly gonna take this one out now this was the last this was the one that was um, still a little bit high so, so I'm just gonna give this one a final water change I'm probably gonna up the flow in this one as well I do apologize for this glare it's all right it's not the best place in the world for getting them um, clear pictures maybe in the evening it'd be better but yeah got some other stuff in there got a nice pothos plant there then a crab pot i can't help it i'm an ex-fisherman see and i got a better in there a lovely male dragon which he's gone in that ball he's absolutely beautiful and i've got two girls there she is one in that one now where are you? She's hiding, she is. Here she comes. Hello. Absolutely beautiful fish. Gonna tr leave these in here for a while. And then I'm um, gonna try and have gonna try and breed these. So uh, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, stick around and you never know. We might have some some baby betters or 
as they're called Siamese fighters. So that'll be interesting as well. I think she's interested in fighting me by the looks of things. Hello. Yeah, got some other ferns and different plants up here, different types. I've hung up a few things here. And over here. So that's a lot handier for me to grab stuff. I'm gonna set that crab pot one. No, I'm not. I might put a little bobber on it and float it in there. That'll look quite. It just takes me back to my fishing days. Because I just loved I used to do a lot of fishing, crabbing, lobster fishing. All the long lining, all that stuff. Meters there. pH meter, two TDS meters. Just in case one I get a false reading off one, I can always measure it up against the other one then. So uh, that's my method of thinking anyway. They're all calibrated. And um, what else has been happening in here? I've got that bulb up there, which I think you've seen before, which is a grow bulb, which I put that on. Look at that. It's got red and blue LEDs in that one. And that's for the plants. I'll leave that on for a couple of hours a day, just as a bit of extra lighting. Yeah, that's filling up away now. Nice. I'll make sure I can just get that nice and level there. And that's all I do. I let that one fill up now and then the rest of it will... Um, and then we'll drop a bit of water out of this one. I can check the uh, the TDSs for you actually on here as we are. Let's turn this on. Okay, TDS in this one is 141 in that tank, which is ideal for them. This tank with nothing in it at the moment is 182 and 181. Bottom tank is 96. That's the neocaridines in there. And this tank in here is running at 132. So that's all my TDS readings. Everything seems to be good at the moment. Oops. Stick that back on there. Good old Velcro. I got some uh, remineralization media up here. Aqua Dirt is one I use. And I also use the Salty Bee. The Bee Shrimp one, this one actually which is very good 90 gram jar that'll remineralize the water obviously at the moment at the moment these are all been mineralized so they don't need to be remineralized just the RO water needs to be added and there you go right let's go back out into the shed for the last bit so there we have it folks back in the shed last look at the TDS meter this is a five stage Got the sediment filter there. <laughs> to be honest with you, I can't remember what's in the middle one now. I've just got this, so I have to uh, do some research. Should have done that before, sorry. And the carbon filter in there. Then that goes through the membrane there. Up then through the deionization, I'll rephrase that, re deionization uh, media at the top there. And then it comes out, and then obviously into the, into the tank. But um, I've done all the tests on it. I've run a good 10 gallons off first. Get rid of any rubbish that was in the system and it's uh, producing zero TDS water, which is fabulous. So now we're all up to speed. Anyway, I'll just take you through. You can want to see the, the koi before we go. Where are you guys? I don't know if you've watched any more of my other videos, but uh, I backwashed the filter system on this yesterday, in case you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, and the water was quite murky, but it's cleared up beautifully now, so watch your fellows. All coming to say hello. Yes, so that's all done. So that one's missing now. That's going to go. I might just keep that as spares, to be honest, just see if I can, I mean, if I do break one of the pots at these chambers at the bottom there, I know they're all, they're all the same sort of fittings and size threads, so... The chances are pretty slim of doing that, but I might just keep it just for a backup in case something drastic happens and I can still use it. 
But yes, if you do like my videos, please like, share and subscribe. Always, um, it's always nice to hear from you. If you've got anything to say, drop it in the comment section below. Like I say, I've got my koi pond here. I've got the shrimp cupboard inside and I've also got an aquascape, which I've done a few videos on as well. If you do want to see the koi pond being built, I've got a slideshow on how it was built. Um, you can look at that and also a walk through as well. So yeah, excellent stuff. Thanks for uh, tuning in and watching. Like I say, anything I can help you with, drop, uh, drop me a message and I'll get back to you. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.